This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, the possibility of drinking untreated raw water became a reality for many in Dunedin today. Former South Island Farmer of the Year, Doug Avery, launches a book about his struggles as a farmer in Invercargill. And emergency services responded to an incident at Queenstown Airport where a light plane crashed on takeoff this morning. Good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. The possibility of drinking untreated water became a reality for many in Dunedin today. Raw water released from the Ross Creek Reservoir on Sunday entered the city's drinking water network. The raw water came from a protected catchment and council officials said it was the same as drinking straight out of a stream or lake. We're pretty confident in the water that pretty the Dunedin City Council called a media conference this afternoon to explain how untreated raw water got into the city's supply system and what was being done about it. I'm Rosella Bone. Dunedin City Council's Emergency Operations Centre is in full swing at the moment as it rushes to flush out contaminated water from Dunedin's water supply, an operation it says should be concluded by this afternoon. Dunedin City Council's Sandy Graham says the centre is monitoring the situation and water pipes are now clear. People need to drain their pipes, that um, 20 to 30 minutes they need to run their taps, but the boiled water notice will still be in place for three days, and so the people need to be mindful of that. The contamination occurred through water accidentally being taken from the wrong pipe while the council was attempting to lower the Ross Creek Reservoir. The staff up there, good staff, they uh, opened a valve that um, they knew led to venting of the Ross Creek Reservoir uh, into the stream so that we could slowly over time begin to reduce the level of water in the reservoir. Uh, unfortunately, it turned out that uh, that valve uh, vented water from the reservoir into uh, some pipework that all of our paperwork insists was shut down, disestablished 30 years ago uh, and actually uh, led it into the city water supply. This map shows the area in the central city to North Dunedin which is affected. Water tankers arranged by the council to supply fresh drinking water were dispatched around the city. Bottled water from supermarkets is in big demand and a two bottle limit had to be imposed. I've bought eight litres at the supermarket and I bought two drink bottles at the library earlier. The first complaints about murky tap water were made to the council on Monday evening. Despite not responding to initial complaints until this morning, the city council says it is satisfied the council has handled processes correctly, but processes will be reviewed. It is not yet completely clear what is in the water. Anyone who suspects they may have drunk contaminated water should head to the hospital as soon as they experience symptoms. The hospital are geared up if people turn up, so I think if people have vomiting and diarrhoea it's very wise to go to your doctor, um, uh, you know, present, don't, don't just sit at home and feel crook. Dunedin Hospital is presently using water from tankers provided by the council. Roselle Labone, The South Today. The family of a 19-year-old Alexandra youth who died in a car crash last week have been overwhelmed by public support in the wake of tragedy. Ravanel Sharma was the front seat passenger in a car that crashed into a tree near Alexandra Airport just before midnight last Thursday. The driver, also 19, remains in a serious condition in Dunedin Hospital. Ravanel's family said they were humbled by the support they have received as well as the Give a Little page that had been set up. The Sharma family wanted to remind families to travel safe and to look out for each other and their friends. Former South Island Farmer of the Year Doug Avery was in Invercargill yesterday to launch his book about his struggles as a farmer. The Resilient Farmer is Avery's emotional account of battling depression. Sharon Rees has more. When we look to the future, the future creates the present. Doug Avery took centre stage at a packed Makariwa Country Club on Monday night for the launch of his book, The Resilient Farmer. Avery says the book focuses on the depression he suffered after a drought destroyed his farm in the 90s and on how he developed mental resilience. That's what I want to do on this book tour. 
is talk to people about building um, their, their top paddock um, so that it can be resilient in the face of the um, dynamic future that we face. Avery says writing the book has given him a new purpose and is already helping people from all over. That book is spreading across Australia, New Zealand. I am getting rings from people saying, oh my God, thank you, Doug, for writing this book. Do you know what that does for me? Gives me value. Makes me feel good. I don't ever want to feel sad again in my life. I know stuff will happen that it makes me feel sad. I want to add value to this world. Emerging from depression wasn't an easy thing to do and Avery says to build resilience, he has to work on it every day. Resilience isn't something that you uh, get up on Monday morning and you can just think, right, I'm going to put myself through a resilience course this week and by uh, five o'clock on Friday, I'm going to be bulletproof. Resilience is a state of mind and it's about constantly working on it. He says the idea is to talk more openly about the issues people are facing in order to help them survive depression. We need to be a lot more encouraging people to keep investing in their own personal growth. Uh, you, you'll never ever see this man uh, neglecting his own um, education and continuous learning process ever again. The Resilient Farmer Tour continues to gore in Winton today and tomorrow before making its way north. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. Following on from that story from Invercargill, an international expert in suicide prevention visited Dunedin over the weekend to advise clinicians on better ways to stop New Zealand's current epidemic. Daryl Baser has more. Visiting English suicide prevention expert John Hendon was in Dunedin over the weekend, offering clinicians in Otago another approach to preventing suicide. I brought out a book in 2008 entitled Preventing Suicide, The Solution Focused Approach. And all individuals and teams I've trained in now up to 20 countries worldwide have reported zero suicide in their caseloads, which is fantastic news. Hendon says the universally successful approach can help people facing this issue in New Zealand, as it has the world over. Speaking as a guest of the Life Matters organisation, he says his motivation for doing this is simple. And what motivates me and keeps me going is constant tales, uh, anecdotes and um, of lives saved by people using solution focused techniques and just the simple questions really which gets the suicidal person thinking that there is another option. He says they use subtle but effective techniques trying to turn the suicidal person's thinking around. Hope and optimism are two important factors and I say to people, the trainees on training courses, how can someone who's suicidal, who's feeling hopeless and lonely and despairing, how can they take their lives if they detect that the helper is hopeful for them? It becomes impossible because they want to explore that before they make any further decisions, which is great. Life Matters Otago says John Hendon's workshop for Otago-based mental health professionals was so successful they're already looking at when they can next bring him to the region. If you or a loved one is dealing with these issues, the agencies on screen are there to help. Daryl Baser, The South Today. The New Zealand Civil Aviation Authority has begun an investigation into the crash of a light plane at Queenstown Airport this morning. Senior Media Advisor for the Authority, Philippa Lagan, said this, in a statement this afternoon the plane seemed to have experienced engine failure as it took off. The crash disrupted 10 commercial flights. Here's Mina Amso with the latest. The damaged Cessna 177B plane was carried off the Queenstown Airport runway late this morning and is now in the hands of investigators for the Civil Aviation Authority. Four passengers were on board the plane when it took off at Queenstown Airport at 8.50 a.m. In a statement, Senior Media Advisor for the Authority, Philippa Lagan, said it appeared that after taking off, the aircraft experienced engine failure. A pilot and three passengers were on board. The front seat passenger suffered an ankle injury and was taken to the hospital. Others were uninjured. 
Ten commercial flights were disrupted as emergency services attended the scene of the crash. Queenstown Airport Corporation CEO Colin Keel says it took two hours before flights resumed operation. Uh, so some flights were diverted um, and, uh, and other aircraft uh, never left their original origin. The wrecked plane is being stored at Queenstown Airport while investigations continue. Mina Amso, The South Today. Still to come on the South today, a planned aerial drop of 1080 poison near Luggett has been postponed indefinitely and a quirky collection of glass eyes and vintage ophthalmology equipment is coming up for auction in Dunedin this week. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. Garage Door Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garage Door's quality service. Garage Door Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoro Valley Road. Visit www.garadour.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. Granddad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Granddad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf with him. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz from rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality secondhand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off, possum, merino possum, pure wools, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season. We're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat from what they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. All new episodes of Put Some Colour In Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour In Your Life, Tuesdays 7.30. Welcome back. A planned aerial drop of 1080 poison near Luggett has been postponed indefinitely over concerns private water supplies might be contaminated. About 3,000 hectares in the Aliceburn area above the Luggett township were earmarked for possum control operation as part of Osprey's TB free program. However, the operation was called off when it was discovered Dead Horse Creek, which is inside the planned drop zone, was used for private water supplies. Consent for the drop has been given by the Southern District Health Board. Eyes will be fixed on unusual items at Haywood's Auction House in Dunedin this week. A quirky collection of glass eyes and vintage ophthalmology equipment, including a refraction unit, a large eye chart, will go under the hammer. It's an auction with a sharp focus, and the eyes have it. 
Collections from two Dunedin ophthalmologists are being looked over at Hayward's auction house this week. As far as we know, it came from a couple of retired ophthalmologists that collected it over many years and it was very cherished and loved by them both. And so we feel really lucky to have it here. Auction house owner Bridget Moore says the equipment is from the personal collections of two retired Otago Medical School staff members. And she says people have had their eyes on the unusual items. There are some glass eyes and some plastic eyes and various testing equipment. It's a very vintage, very steampunk in its appearance. Proving that sometimes four eyes are better than two, she says many people have viewed the items online and at the auction house. Well, we often get quirky, unusual items, um, but not specifically from the optometry department. She says customers always see their way clear to ogle at unusual items like this. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. The Royal Albatross Centre and Blue Penguins Pukukura has reopened following flood events last month. The closure has cost the Otago Peninsula Trust Glenfellick, the Albatross Centre and Blue Penguin tours around $50,000 in loss of income, insurance excess and remedial work. Visitors are now free to enjoy the Otago Peninsula Royal Albatross Centre again. The centre has reopened although last month's extreme weather has seen the loss of tens of thousands of dollars. It's not so much the damage to the building. I mean, there was, it wasn't really damage to the building, a little bit of water here and there. Really, it's just damage to the business, which is, you know, visitors not like being able to get through for 12 days. This year is the 50th anniversary of the Otago Peninsula Trust, which manages several big tourist attractions in the region, including the Albatross Colony. It was closed from the 22nd of July to the 2nd of August. Barker says that's a real blow from where they were tracking with the budget. Just uh, looking through the numbers for our insurance claim and as we keep adding it up it gets scarier and scarier. We also had a slip at Glenfellick and that meant that the restaurant there couldn't um, run for a few days and there was a function booked in for about 100 people so that's um, a substantial loss as well. She says most people had fallen in love with fledgling albatrosses on the Peninsula webcam and there were disappointed visitors who missed out on seeing them during the closure. So the first day that we were closed I think we issued over seven hundred dollars worth of refunds just for the first few days so it's um, pretty tough. Some animals required supplementary feed with Doc using a water taxi at times to get past the slip. Two penguins were lost with the slip. Remedial work on the Headlands Access Road is expected to continue for several months yet. Roselle Labone, The South Today. After the break on the South today, a new plan for delivering health services in the Waitaki district could result in major changes to the Omaru Hospital. And last weekend saw the, last, saw the start of a community orchard in Cavisham. Autumn is here. Too late to sow grassy, but never fear. Ready Lawn is here. Ready Lawn, your perfect all year round solution. Call Ready Lawn today. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. University of Otago. Usually the atmosphere is charged with the energy of student life. But this week is the week before exams. Hey, Tain. Not now, man. I'm panicking. Come on, mate. I know just what you need. In here? No, no. Is this it? No. This is the place to ease your stress. Hey, Tain. Fancy a little cuddle?
Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 473 8252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off, possum, merino possum, pure wool, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Men's Wear, it fits. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. They say nothing in life is free, but some things are, like smelling the flowers, mm. random acts of kindness, mm. hugs, mm. compliments, nice hat and best of all how good is free tv more shows than you can shake a stick at new zealand watch it live for free on demand for free record for free with freeview watch your seat belts on for this one and rev it up thursday night is motorsport night Proudly brought to you by multi-award winning Garador. Welcome back. Omaru Hospital could be remodelled, staff roles redesigned and changes made to the way its emergency department is operated under a new plan for delivering health services in the Waitaki district. A 31-page concept plan has been released by Waitaki District Health Services as a first step to changing services after financing from the Southern District Health Board was secured for the next five years. Following lengthy negotiations, Waitaki District Health Services Chairman Chris Swan says changes at the hospital would be made reasonably quickly, but the plan, which was still theoretical, could take up to five years to implement fully. The last weekend saw the start of a community orchard in Cavisham. A group of volunteers planted more than a dozen fruit trees in a neighbourhood reserve. Rudy Adrian dug around for more details. The Cavisham Community Group is all about building pride in the community. And these local volunteers are happy with the start of a new orchard. This is actually a project we were approached by Sustainable Dunedin and they want to actually plant fruit trees in communities and that was that was something that we we actually like having food resources in our community and we'd actually like to grow the food resources um, furthermore and have more trees, fruit and nut trees in the community. These trees will have to be watered and tended for the next crucial three years. The reserve itself was a lucky discovery by the community group. This green space um, was, was somewhat um, tucked away behind a fence and the community sort of thought it was private land but after researching it, the Kirish Community Group found it was actually a reserve and it was available for the community to use. So once we established that we, we were started utilising it for market days and things like that. Um, historically it was um, the site of the first immigration barracks um, and then later when that was no, no longer in use become a fever hospital and then oh, a match factory, then a fever hospital and then a croquet ground and, and now back to a reserve for the general public. The reserve is also one you can navigate with a smartphone app for virtual adventures. At the moment there is, is an application running on this park which is the magical park and so you can download an app and you can chase around the park for um, kittens or dinosaurs with your, your, your phone app. The success of this community group of turning a piece of abandoned land into a park is an example to all communities. Who knows how many other pieces of wasteland could be turned into a beautiful community garden. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. The possibility of drinking untreated water became a reality for many in Dunedin today after raw water was released from the Ross Creek Reservoir on Sunday. 
Former South Island Farmer of the Year Doug Avery was in Invercargill yesterday to launch his book about his struggles as a farmer. And the New Zealand Civil Aviation Authority has begun an investigation into the crash of a light plane at Queenstown Airport this morning. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Craig Page. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's all about the water for us tomorrow as well. Of course, big story for Dunedin. Um, we're having a bit of a look at the impact it's likely to have, uh, particularly on businesses as well. Lots of cafes struggling to uh, to keep open today with uh, not being able to boil their water. Um, yeah, so they're, they're wondering how long they might be out of business as well. Um, we're also, um, yeah, we're also talking to uh, the the. Chamber of Commerce, they're, uh, they're sort of giving us a bit of an overview about how long this is and, and what the impact could be. Uh, we'd, we're expecting tests back tomorrow from, for the DCC which will really give us the full impact of the contamination and we might be able to get more of a handle on things then. Yeah, we can't be running out of coffee around the town. No, no we'll end up like Auckland. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Uh, white baiting season underway today, so we've uh, sent one of our reporters along the Kaitangata River uh, catching up with some regulars down there, uh, hoping, hoping for a big season. It's been pretty miserable the last couple of years, so uh, yeah, hopeful to get out there. It's a bit of a lifestyle thing for the Maruta. They set up their camp there for several weeks and uh, try their luck. Um, we had a look at the National uh, Classic Powerlifting Champs on in Dunedin at the moment, caught up with... Um, Chap from Central Districts, Ian Dennis, who's uh, it's been a bit of a life-changing thing for him. He was uh, describing himself being overweight and a, and a heart attack waiting to happen, and he took up the sport to sort of set up a good impression for his children, and is now a national champion. So he's done really well. And That's really impressive. For us all there. Yeah, definitely. And with our fresh pages, we look at the benefits of home cooking. Um, aside from the obvious cost factor, um, research showing that those who cook at home uh, choose healthier options. So some good advice there as well. Well, you could bring some samples in for us tomorrow. See what I can do. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Thank you. And now time for a look at tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsville. It's starting with today's southern view taken of the sun trying to peek through at Dunedin's Ogdegan. Looking at the situation this week will bring more rain in the west but dry in the east. Expect strong winds tomorrow night as the front passes over. To the southern outlook, down south, Lumsden, Gore, Catlins and Balclutha, you can all expect fresh northwesterlies, late rain and 13 degrees. To the central outlook, Tiana, fresh northwesterlies, rain and 12, Queenstown, freshening northerlies, cloud increasing and 13, Wanaka and Alexandra, freshening northerlies and you're both 14 degrees. To the northern outlook, Omaru and Timaru, increasing northeasterlies, some high cloud and you're both 12. Twizel and Amarama, freshening northerlies, cloud increasing and you're both 14 degrees. Here in Dunedin tonight, fine with an overnight low of 4 degrees. Tomorrow mostly fine and sunny with northeasterlies. Some rain can be expected during the night with strong northerly winds and a high of 11. And on Thursday, fine with a high cloud and gusty northwesterly winds. Mainly fine on Friday as well with lighter westerly winds. And in Bacargo tonight, fine with high cloud increasing with an overnight low of 7 degrees. Tomorrow, fine with high cloud and northwesterly winds developing. Rain and fog patches possible at night and a high of 12. And on Thursday, showers clearing and sunny periods increasing during the day with westerly winds. Friday, you can expect showers and colder southwesterlies developing and a high of 13 degrees. And that's our news for this Tuesday. For the latest news from the South Today team, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. I hope you all have a great evening. Take care. Kakita no. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.